there was a couple donkeys walking around uh, the city, and the younger donkey says to the older donkey, he goes, you know, a few days ago I was giving this fellow a ride, and I was the center of attraction. People even threw their clothes in front of me so I could walk on them with palm branches. And he goes, now? Nobody even knows I'm here. And the older donkey said, just goes to prove, without Jesus, you're a nobody. <laughs> uh, okay, thank you, thank you. I know you have one Rhonda to tell soon, don't you? Oh, I do have a good one. Uh, Okay, all right. It'll be good for Good Friday. Yeah, okay, good. Oh, that's, yeah. Oh, so this is our palm service, right? This is our palm service, yes. <laughs> Here we go. Bada bing. <laughs> yeah, uh, you messed me up today, Sean. By talking about that stuff. That's good stuff. Now I want to dig into that. But I'm excited about what I'm going to share today. Do, do you all realize, do you, do, you, do you know how much the Gospels are made up of like the last few weeks of Jesus' life? A good portion of it is in leading up and especially. And everybody knows that like Palm Sunday is basically now we understand it to be the first day of Passion Week, the beginning, because we know that after Sunday, then going into that week is going to lead into Good Friday and what happens there and, and all of that. So, uh, and there's a lot of stuff that happens in that time that's recorded in Scripture. Um, but I just want to, like, kind of just, like, meander through it, all right, and do it how we do it. So I just, I'm just going to... If it's okay, I'm just going to read Matthew chapter 21, uh, starting at the first verse. I'm not going to read all of it, just part of it, and then we'll talk some. Um, it says this, Now when they drew near Jerusalem and came to Bethnage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples. You know, it's kind of amazing how Jesus would just like, send somebody on a mission and what would happen. Remember when he sends Peter to go catch a fish because he says, well, we probably should, to shut their mouths, we should pay taxes. So I'll tell you what, Peter, go catch a fish and you're going to open its mouth and you're going to find a gold coin in the mouth of that fish. You take that gold coin and you pay your taxes and my taxes. Where is Jesus when you really need him this time of the year? <laughs> we just got to believe, right? That's that's crazily reckless faith right there, Sharon. I don't care who you are. You just got, I want to go fishing anyway. All right. So so anyway, he tells his two disciples, he, he sends them on a mission. He says, go to the village opposite you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. You guys understand colt? That's the young donkey. Okay, that's the offspring of the donkey. And loose them and bring them to me. Now you know that when Jesus rides in, he's riding on the colt, right? Okay. Okay. And if anyone says anything to you, just say you're going to steal them in my name. Oh, no. <laughs> if anyone says anything to you, you shall say... The Lord has need of them, and immediately he will send them. Okay. I know that some of you think that. That does happen. I mean, I mean, any believer, when they go fishing, should catch fish. Now, to those, man of God, but to those of you who go fishing and don't catch anything, you need to up the ante and start your prayer life a little more. Maybe you should pray before you go fishing. Right. Just saying. 
I catch fish when I go fishing. That's why I fish. <laughs> and when all this was done, and all, excuse me, and all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, which was Zechariah, that's found in 9.9 9 of Zechariah, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, behold, your king is coming to you lowly and setting on a donkey, a colt in the fold of a donkey. And so the disciples went and they did as Jesus commanded them. And they brought the donkey and the colt and they laid their clothes on them and they set him on them. Uh, let's, like, let's meander down this for a minute. Um, so why, would, why do you think that Jesus would ride, not just ride on a donkey... Uh, but he even chose the younger donkey. Because it, uh, if you're going to go into battle, I'm going to put this to you this way so you kind of grasped it. You don't go riding on a donkey. Now, if you're going on a, on a peace mission, guess what the animal was at that time to ride? It was a donkey. And Jesus chose a young donkey because he is humble. And because of his lowly spirit, okay? So, and how fitting that the prince of peace, the prince of all creation, should do this. And, and I would like to say this. I think this whole thing was so not Jesus. When I get to the end, as I share, you know, my thoughts on this, I think you'll understand what I'm talking about. But for him to even do this and allow the people to respond to him in the way they do. Yeah, it was totally out of character for him. But then there is a scripture that's got to be fulfilled. And so Jesus allows it to take its course. And so as we go through, I'm going to like put in some of my thoughts. But I always, I just don't like my opinion to be my opinion. So I like to back it up with God's word. Can I see that? You know? <laughs> Don't you like to think that when you have an opinion, it's just not your opinion, but your opinion is right? Rhonda, I know. No, never mind. I'm not going to get myself in trouble. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's, just, just, let's out with it. Our opinions are right. I'm, all right. Okay. Okay. We've got to be sure of ourselves that we need to shut our mouths, right? So... So anyway, uh, no, let's talk a little more about, okay, palm branches. Does anybody have any idea what palm branches are? I, I, I mean, for, most and foremost is it, it's represent, representative of goodness and, what's the other one, victory, for sure. Okay, just with that being said, uh, let's see. I, I know I put it in here in in direct response to the palm branches. First Corinthians fifteen fifty five. There it is. Oh death, where is your sting? Oh Hades, where is your victory? But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Well, let me go on and do this one too. This is a. Uh, uh, 2 Corinthians 2.14. Now thanks be to God. I know you like this one, Patrick. Thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ, who through us diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. I mean, those of us who cherish the Lord and his word, I mean, you can tell people who are passionate about the Lord Jesus because when they speak of him and when they I mean they bring him with them and there's this when they begin to speak or sometimes they don't even have to speak sometimes some people are just they bear that fragrance so nice that they walk in and I swear I know that smell well I don't know if swear is the right word I'm sure I've smelled that before and I like it uh, but that's that 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 fragrance of God, and He does have a fragrance, 
I mean, uh, uh, if you haven't experienced this, you need to. You need to spend enough time in prayer and communion with Him or in worship to Him to where it just comes over you and you're just, the whole atmosphere changes and it just, you can, you can smell it. Okay. It's just, yeah. Yeah. Like falling into a vat of chocolate with a little toffee in it and cashews. Oh. <laughs> He's so good. That's why the prophet said, oh, taste and see. So he's got a taste, too. The Lord is good. He says it's like, it's just like honey in the rock. Mm. So there's um, these characteristics of the Lord that we, when we have this relationship to him, and they're, they're sweet. They're, they're good. And they smell so good on you. Uh, so anyway, as this is going forth, uh, the multitudes go before and those who followed him and they cry out saying, Hosanna. Okay, maybe many people say, what does Hosanna mean? It's basically salvation or save now. Okay, so it's kind of for the Lord only. And so they're crying out, Hosanna to the son of David, which is specific to Messiah because he is known as the son of David. And blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. And so this is like an incredible thing. And this is that whole thing about this is so unlike Jesus, but he, allowing them to do this. And, but he takes it a step further after this is all. Remember he goes into the, into the temple after all of this? I, th I might have it here in scripture. I think I do. Uh, <clears throat> when they had come into Jerusalem, all the city was moved. And some saying, who is this? And the multitude said, this is Jesus, the prophet the Na uh, uh, from Nazareth of Galilee. Okay, so this is why I'm saying this is so unlike Jesus. Because here they're calling him the prophet. They're giving him all this honor and this glory. He's doing nothing to stop. He's allowing all this to take place. But yet in the beginning of his ministry, it was totally opposite. Listen, remember when he feeds the thousands with the, uh, the loaves and the fishes? I'll remind you where that's at. That's John six fourteen. After all this happens, they come because they're going to take him. And they're going to make him their king. It says this. Then those men, when they had seen the sign that Jesus did, they said, this is truly the, the prophet who has come into the world. What did Jesus do? Oh, you finally recognize me. He didn't do that. It says, when Jesus perceived that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, he departed again to the mountain by himself to be alone. Why did he do that? Because how can man come and take the king of the eternal glory and make him king of a temporary realm in the here and now? Do you see how presumptuous that was? But he's allowing these people, because of prophecy, to do this. And they still have the mindset, he's the prophet, and we're going to make him king. In that temporary mindset, because men and women were always wanting someone to lead them, and to conquer for them, and to overcome their enemies for them, and to make their troubles go away. Because man thinks in short term. But God thinks in the eternal. You see, God had a much greater plan. And not only that, 
Because His work, according to Isaiah 62, where this is prophesied too, because His whole plan is still before Him. Even in that triumphant entry, He still has His work before Him. Because the greatest work, the mission that He came to planet Earth to do, is still a few days out. And that's why we call it the passion or the suffering of the Christ. And He knows what's coming. Ooh. You know, when you understand these things about our Messiah, about our King, about our Savior, it, it just, it's, it's humbling. I, this week I, I, I got a little achy and a high temperature and stuff, and I, I was sitting there just like suffering, and then I started thinking about Jesus. And I'm like, oh Lord, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry what you had to go through. Because when you're like have a high temperature and stuff, and it, like your skin hurts. Your hair hurts. I'm a big baby. I don't do pain very well. I hurt all over. And what they did to him, and his body was racked with, with high temperature. Because they had already torn all the skin off of his back and off of his ribs. And they had punched his face beyond recognition, yanked out his beard. And he suffered. He took that. That's the passion of our Christ. And... Then on top of all of that in his suffering and with his body racked with fever and then they nailed him to the cross. And he refused to even take the vinegar to keep as a, that was a painkiller that they offered him and he refused it. Because he had to suffer every bit of it and then be rejected by all of his followers. who didn't, Peter denied he even knew his name. That's got to be tough. The rejection. But Jesus did that. He faced that and did that because he is acquainted with our grief and our suffering and even our rejection to the fullest. We have no idea. And then to have the Father turn his back on him because he couldn't stand to look at the pain and the sin that was upon his son. And that's death right there. That's true death. That was our payment. For sin to restore us once again to God, the family of God. It's just incredible. But don't you aren't you glad that God thinks in the long term and not the short term? And Jesus would would allow these things to be done. Even this, even the triumphant entry and all that, because and that's no big thing. If he was trying if all of a sudden there was a big change in Jesus, and now oh my popularity has gone up. We'll go ahead and build this ministry. Things are looking pretty good. Hey, boys, let's get in line. We're going to just build this ministry. I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to hang out for a while. We'll get our coffers full and we'll build us a big temple. Was that his attitude? No. He goes into the local temple in Jerusalem and immediately overturns the tables of the money changers because they're making a mockery of God's house. He said, my Father's house is a house of prayer, and you have made it a den of thieves. Oh, and if you thought Jesus was a pushover, he went to the wall and took the whip off of the wall, and he drove them out with the whip. Not my Jesus. <laughs> you know... The blind and the lame came to him in the temple, and he healed them. Right in front of those religious people. But when the chief priest and the scribes saw the wonderful things that he did, and the children crying out in the temple and saying, Hosanna to the son of David, they were indignant. What do you think these religious people were indignant? Can't you see that we're in the temple here praying for Messiah to come and you come and disturb everything? <laughs> or was it worse than that? Maybe they were secretly saying, you're coming and messing up our money yeah. program we got yeah. going yeah. and you're taking the glory that we should be getting. Yeah. Oh, he messed up the religious. He's still messing up religious systems today. Yeah. Thank God. Oh, I love you, Jesus. You're amazing. But, you know, I used to think that 
That prayer that Jesus prayed as, Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how he's crying over Jerusalem. Do you know that that came after this? It's in like Matthew 24. Where he cries over Jerusalem. He goes, how I wanted to gather you together. Like a chick would, a chick would gather, a hen would gather her chicks. I wanted you to bring, I wanted to bring you and comfort you. But you didn't know your hour. You didn't know the time of your visitation. And Jesus weeps over the city because of they were indignant at him. And thank goodness for the children. What did he tell those the, the, the scribes and, and, and the religious people? Because they said to him when they were indignant, do you hear what they are saying? And Jesus said to them, yes. Have you not read out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants? Infants, you have perfected praise. Ooh. He said on the outside, if they cease, the rocks will cry out. I think those rocks cry out now. Don't the crystals cry out? I think so. The glory and the goodness of God. And it's all recorded. But God is good and Jesus is do you know that he, the same the same way the same heart that he had there now is to all people, is to all of us, and we need to recognize who he is and what he does. Lift him up. The Bible says that magnify that you should magnify the Lord. You know what magnify means to enlarge something to. Look closely at it and magnify it. And as we begin to magnify the life and the times of Jesus and all that he did and all his glory, it's amazing. It's incredible. And I think that we're only seeing the surface of who he truly is and what he has done. John even went as far as to say that if, if everything that he had done, the word, had done. If it was recorded in books, the earth itself wouldn't be able to contain the books that should be written. Some of you will say, well, what are we going to do in eternity? Well, if I can just take a couple million years and like, you know, see all the mysteries of Jesus, I'll just be glad to do that. I'm telling you. But thank God because of what he was willing to do on our behalf, beginning on this Palm Sunday, laying it all down. The Prince of Peace, the Prince of Life, the Prince of all creation would come and allow this week to even begin, this week of suffering, this Passion Week. And uh, I think we owe it all to him. Man, we got done early tonight. So I'm going to let you all go home. And but we, got, we, we got one more thing. See? I knew I was supposed to end early. But anyway, come on up, Rhonda. Patrick Shar, Alex, will you guys join me?